Hi everybody, it's February 19, 2018. I'm putting this together rather quickly. Um, you know, it's, we're on the same exact path. We're going in the same exact direction. And for the Trump supporters, you know, you really need to take a step back and take a look at what is happening. Don't just listen to what people say. Take a look at their actions. That is the only way that you can determine the truth about an individual. You look at their actions. It does not matter what they say. If what they say does not match what they do, you know that there is something wrong. And it is quite possible that that individual is lying outright or just living a pretense. I don't know how everybody else feels, but I am getting so unbelievably sick of watching this country just descend into utter chaos. You know, now we have this school shooting again. So the agendas continue. And we learn that, wow, there was a drill. There was a drill. We were told the police would do a fake code red with fake guns. That's what the students were told. That's what the administration, the teachers were told. Code red, active shooter drill with fake guns. It went live. Wow. Now, I, I can't post on these events anymore. And I have to tell you, it's like watching a rerun. And I never, ever liked watching reruns. I couldn't understand how people could waste their time watching a show that they, it, they had seen before. Um, so, yes, we have seen these events take place over and over and over again. And essentially, they remain the same. The narrative remains the same. Whether they're false flags or staged, well, that depends on the, the people that are orchestrating these events. Did people die in Florida? I'm sure we're going to be hearing an awful lot of people saying no one died. Um, I haven't even looked into it all that much to find out. But you know what's fascinating? What's fascinating is the American collective, the rage that comes out against senseless violence in the United States. Senseless violence of a school shooting, but do they care at all? They care nothing about the senseless violence we bring upon innocent civilians in so many countries every day, either by our selling weapons to countries that use them against innocent civilians, or, and, or, well, it's more, more than not, that we bring that senseless violence directly to others by bombing them, by our drone strikes, by our ruthless evil that, well, we love to believe is our moral support, superiority. We're, we're, these are humanitarian acts, Carol. Come on. We're collapsing under the weight of violent hypocrisy. Training exercises dovetail with mass shootings. What are the odds? This was posted in 2015. It's a repost of John Rappaport's article in 2015. Isn't it interesting that these drills suddenly go live? And there are so many of them. But here, the November 13, 2015 Paris attacks. Oh, they just so happen to have been having a drill. The Charleston, South Carolina church shooting. Oh, they just so happen to be having a drill. An active, an active shooter threat instructor program. Drill. The Boston Marathon. We all know. Drill. Sandy Hook. Drill. Aurora, 
Colorado, the Batman shooting, drill. Oslo bombing shooting attack, drill. Bomb attacks on the London Underground in 2005, July 7, drill. Attacks on Trade Center and the Pentagon, drill. 22 drills taking place. But we can't seem to get Americans to even think about that. No. Uh, it gets incredibly frustrating. Um, I'm going to link below to In Truth by Grace's video, Urgent Stasi State, Mental Health, and the Details of the Drill. I watched six minutes. I, um, I respect In Truth by Grace's analysis of events. She points out an awful lot that needs clearly to be pointed out to Americans, but can we get them off mainstream media? Can we get them just to feel just a little bit uncomfortable, to do something a little bit different, like just watch some of these videos, please, so we can, we can begin to manifest something other than the brutal insanity that we live. No. No. Yes, and I will tell you six years of this, you know, some have done it much, much longer. Can't tell you how they're feeling, but I will tell you how I'm feeling. Just watching everything get worse and worse and worse. And, and then I get people who are writing, look, things are getting better. Don't you understand? You're just so negative. No, things are not getting better. They are getting far worse. Far worse. But then you have an awful lot of people in the awake crowd who just want that hope. Give me that hope. Carol, stop killing people's hope. Well, false hope gets you nowhere. Sorry. Can't do it. Can't do it. And, you know, when you think about all of the people, not just in the United States, but all of the people around the world who are, quote-unquote, awake, and we can't seem to organize ourselves to fight the few? Why? Why? Well, because it does not matter how much knowledge you have in your head about all of the events that are taking place. If you don't work on yourself to bring yourself to a higher consciousness where your care actually becomes genuine, generative, then you'll sit back and do nothing. If you don't work on your own personal issues regarding shame, um, the lack of courage that you have, the fear that really kind of propels your life, then you will sit back and do nothing. And that's why we are losing. So we have many in the awake crowd who really are the sheeple awake, just like the sheeple the, that we rail against. And yes, I know, people don't like what I hear, what, what I say. And they don't like hearing it, and they don't want to, you know, do anything, but they want to attack me. You know, look, the Trump supporters, you want to attack me? because Trump pulled us out of the Paris Agreement, which meant nothing at all. Nothing at all. Because we have governors and states and local officials implementing the climate change plans, Agenda 2030. It's still proceeding. So it doesn't matter what Trump says. And you notice that he doesn't say anything about all of those Mayors, the 392 mayors across the country who have signed on to the Paris Agreement, you don't hear him saying anything about all of the governors of states who have signed on to the Paris Agreement. No. All you hear is, we're getting out of this Paris Agreement. And what you have heard from Trump is, well, I just would have negotiated, negotiated that deal better for Americans. Really. Well, the narcissist will always put themselves on a pedestal and talk about how great they are at doing everything. 
but watch what happens. Um, I'm also going to link below to a Plain Truths video on this shooting. Um, he points out in the first, you know, 54 seconds, right there staring us in the face, 9407. 9, 4, plus 7 is 11. 911. And we all know that these, these satanic crud that we call the elite are into their numbers. 911, 911, 911. Um, I'm going to link below to stopthecrime.net news new video working title working title uh, you know you, I don't know why Deborah Tavares named it working title but when I saw that I thought there are so many videos that I post I have no idea what to title them at this point but it's grind all 61 and Deborah Tavares who are at the meetings who are showing us what is taking place in California that's coming to everybody that's taking place already in so many communities around the country but how many people go to those meetings how many people are posting videos on these meetings and I'm not saying it's just Deborah Tavares and grind all 61 but I am saying that it's few and far between so what we have going on in California is Trump going to be stopping that does Trump mention anything about Agenda 2030? Does he mention anything about these uh, fires, the flooding, the hurricanes? Does he mention anything about weather modification? And you think, you think Trump doesn't know that our weather now is completely and utterly controlled? When you think about his uncle, John Trump, who our government sent to review the Tesla papers after Tesla was murdered, John Trump, and now we got Donald in the White House, and you don't think that there's something a little fishy there? John Trump, who told his nephew, Donald, about the weapons that are unimaginable coming from this technology? Donald Trump knows. Um, you think about that memo release, right? Memo, FBI used tainted steel dossier paid for by Hillary Clinton as a reason to spy on Trump. As a reason to spy on Trump. Okay, well, that's out. That's established. Hillary Clinton is a bona fide criminal who, during Donald Trump's campaign, was going to be investigated. Crooked Hillary, crooked Hillary, crooked Hillary. Well, if I was president, you'd be in jail, Hillary. So, why is she not in jail? Because Donald Trump, after getting elected, elected said, Hillary's been through enough. And you know what? The Clintons are really good people anyway. Really? Okay. Um, that in itself, I believe, should have really uh, motivated every Trump supporter to take a step back. Okay, he lied to us. What does that mean? It means that we need to stay stepped back and watch what this guy does. And if you stayed stepped back, you would realize that he is doing exactly what Obama did, and Obama did exactly what Bush was doing, and Bush did exactly what Clinton was doing, and Clinton did exactly what Bush was doing, and they are following the exact same agenda. But they put out a whole lot of bullshit that, I'm sorry, at this point, Americans should be able to smell instantly. But why don't they? We've been lied to, and lied to, and lied to, and lied to, so why? Is it that Americans can't get that they're being lied to again, played again, with these sick, 
satanic, you, you know, just they're, they're nut jobs. They're, they're, well, that's an understatement for sure. They are so phenomenally evil. Why? Why? How is it possible that we can be lied to over and over and over again and we just accept them and then a new guy comes into the White House and, well, you've been lied to before, but somehow you're just believing this guy who claims to be anti-establishment. He's, he's not an insider. And he's so inside that he was friends with the Clintons. They... The Clintons came to the Trump's weddings. He is so an insider. And I do believe that he was, you know, just like Obama, prepped for the right time to get into the White House. And so is Donald Trump. The right time to get into the White House. You know, Trump, as president, he could appoint a special prosecutor to investigate Hillary. Does he? No. No. President Trump is responsible for Hillary Clinton not being prosecuted. Not being prosecuted. Well, focus on the Russians. That's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on the Russians. Mueller isn't investigating Hillary Clinton's emails because... He was given a mandate to investigate Russian attempts to influence the 2016 election and any crimes he uncovers in that process. Well, he uncovered a crime. The Clinton Foundation funding steals dossier. That was used in this Russian scandal. But what does Mueller do? Nothing. Um, so, yeah, Hillary Clinton isn't being prosecuted because the president wasn't interested in doing it. That's exactly right. Mr. Trump, who branded his rival Crooked Hillary and said she would go to jail if he were president, said in an interview with reporters and editors at the New York Times that he was no longer interested in pursuing Mrs. Clinton, in part because she wanted to heal the wounds of a or he wanted to heal the wounds of a divisive campaign. Well, geez, that kind of reminds me of Obama who campaigned saying he was going to investigate Bush and Cheney and hold them accountable for their crimes, getting us into Iraq when Iraq, it, it, the, the entire, all of the intelligence was based on a lie and we destroyed a country, bombing it, and how many innocent Iraqi civilians did we murder based on a lie? And everybody was so happy to hear Obama say, hey, we're going to investigate Bush and Cheney. He comes into office and says, we can't look back. We've got to go forward. And you know what? You know, in my crowd, they immediately they immediately saw the wisdom in his words. That's right. We need to go forward. We can't be focusing on what happened in the past. Oh, the past is such a frightening, frightening place for Americans to go. Because if they go to the past, our collective past, it might open the door to their own past. And, oh, shiver me timber, don't want to go there. That, uh, I'm a courageous American, but don't let me face myself. I can't face myself. Presidents either needs, a president either needs to appoint a special prosecutor to look into Secretary Clinton's wrongdoing or stop using her as a defense to suggest he's unfairly persecuted. Right now, the president has refused to have someone investigated and is complaining about the lack of an investigation. So, Hillary Clinton, he does have the power to investigate her. He doesn't. But continues to say that the Clintons, you know, Hillary Clinton and the funding of the dossier, and they're behind it, but he does nothing. So he's speaking words that 
so many Americans want to hear, but Americans, please, hold on to the idea of follow-up. Follow-up. Okay, he said that. What's he going to do about it? But he does nothing about it. So, you know, part of, part of this journey that we're all on is coming completely out of the matrix, out of the matrix, completely. What's happening in Washington, D.C. is not going to change because Trump is there. Trump is part of this play. Whether you like it or not, he just is. And when you think about Miss Hillary Clinton's crime sheet, this is only five reasons Hillary Clinton should be in prison. She's worse than crooked. She is a despicable, just a uh, immoral to the core. Just, just, she's a psychopath. She is the epitome. She's like the face of pathological narcissism right there. We are our leaders. All of our leaders are criminals. The U.S. government is a private corporation run by a criminal cabal. And these people that we see that speak to us, they're the puppets. They're the puppets. Trump does not have the control, and he's not fighting any deep state. And even if he's taken out by the quote-unquote deep state, don't you think that that could be staged as well? The whole thing, everything that we are seeing is staged. It's a staged play for them to continue their agendas to bring in this new world order, the reshaping of the world as incredulous, as incomprehensible as that sounds. That's exactly what these board members, the board members of U.S. of A. Inc., the board members, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, those are the ones who are pulling the strings. Do you think Trump, who got bailed out by the Rothschilds, who got bailed out by George Soros, <laughs> is an outsider? The war on Libya, this sick, sick woman who I really can't even look at. I, her face just turns my stomach. Hillary Clinton bears more responsibility for the ill-fated war on Libya than anyone else. Even Barack Obama admitted it was a colossal mistake. What, what did she say? We came. We saw he died. This, this disgusting woman Americans still support. So something's profoundly wrong with Americans. Something is so profoundly wrong with Americans that they could actually support their psychopathic criminal quote-unquote leaders. And something is very, very wrong when you as an individual need a leader. You as an individual need Trump to fix things. Because the only, 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 only People who can fix anything are you. It's you. It, it's, it's you and those in your community. That's it. That's who you have to rely on. You. But just like our quote-unquote leaders who pass the buck of responsibility onto everybody else, they can't ever accept any responsibility for anything that they do. So do Americans. They pass the buck of responsibility to their quote-unquote leaders, who have shown them time and time again 
that they do nothing for them. They treat them as if they are cattle. They treat them as if they are worthless nothings. And that is in our face. It's been in our face for a very, very long time. But clearly, we have been so demoralized that, that we just sit like children and take it. Because it's mommy and daddy, and you know, there's nothing we can do. Trapped children. Trapped children in a family of horrible abuse. That's what we are. And we wait for a mommy or a daddy to, I don't know, suddenly become well, to suddenly turn around and love us and care for us and finally do what a good parent should do. It is childlike thinking. It's like living in a really dark Disneyland, living in this country now. I'm not going to read this. We all know the crimes of Hillary Clinton. We've known this for decades. We know it. We know she's a criminal. But we too allow the criminals to go free. It's gotten to this point because the American people have allowed it to get to this point. So if they don't change, nothing will change. And they're still going to be you know, treated like cattle, treated like they're worthless children to be just abused, stolen from. Can I think about my mother, a malignant narcissist who, who, you know, oh God, we were, things were bad. Um, we did not grow up rich. My mother married into rich. Um, but my older brother started working at a very, very young age. And my mother took his money. <laughs> We're a great big family here. The human race is a family. So when I think about all of the individual experiences I've had with my own malignant narcissistic mother, and then I just expand it out into the collective, it's no different. It's no different. When you grow up with evil, you can really spot evil. And it turns your stomach when you so, see so many Americans who either deny it or get scared of it and don't do anything about it. But it really turns your stomach when you see so many who put these evil, God, 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 I don't know. There are no words. There are no words to describe this sick creature. But then you watch Americans put these sick creatures including this guy, including Trump, on a pedestal. We have something profoundly wrong here. But it, look, these people are not going to change. They're not going to change. The Americans have to change. Individuals have to change. And what really needs to be done is that we've got to stop supporting these people and start thinking outside the box about what can be done in your own communities. We know, we know Hillary Clinton said, hey, we created Al-Qaeda. We know that we fund terrorism, that there is evidence that ISIS is our proxy terrorist organization. And we just allow it to continue. Fooling ourselves, pretending, pretending, pretending that we are good people and pretending that we're going to get somewhere. Trump is not going to hold this woman accountable. And here we go. 
Hillary Clinton, if I'm president, we will attack Iran. We would be able to do, totally obliterate them. Yeah, yeah, kill more people. That's what I like, because I'm a psychopath, and I have no conscience, and I have no feeling, and I just want to kill and bring destruction. Understand, please, evil, evil is about destruction. Evil is about destruction. They're not about enhancing life. They are about destroying life. That's what they love to do. And they love to see the suffering behind all of their destructive actions. These are not people that have the same kind of mentality that ordinary people do. These are so sick. They're... You can't, you can't grasp the sickness within them because it's so far removed from anything that is even remotely decent and good. So, a lot of people voted for Trump because, why? Oh, because Hillary would have been so much worse. The lesser of two evils? Guess what? We got Trump. He's a war machine. He's just as sick and psychopathic as Hillary. And he is pursuing the exact same agenda. It looks a little bit different. It's packaged a little bit different. But if you can't see the nuances, then you end up supporting somebody who's just as evil. And I'm going to be posting a video because I don't see a lot of videos on the abject chaos that Trump has escalated in the Middle East in African countries. Now we're paying attention to an awful lot that's happening here. What's happening? Trump said he was going to pull us out of these needless wars. The horror that Trump has unleashed in the Middle East escalating escalating the horror of Obama. And let me tell you, <laughs> you would have thought that that would have been hard to do. Not with these people. I'll link below to everything. To all of the uh, articles. Please rethink. Please. You've got to rethink. Look, it takes an awful lot of effort. It takes an awful lot of energy. It takes an awful lot of time in this really sick and deranged play that we are living. You know, and I catch myself kind of going into something and I'm believing it. And then I go, well, how could you believe anything? I'm always catching myself saying, how, how do you, why are you believing this? What is going on? And that requires an awful lot of research then to come to the best estimation, conclusion that you can have. This is what lies do. We are the country of the lie. And lies, well, it's really easy. It's really easy to kind of pull yourself out of the evil because, because everything is on the under the umbrella of the lie. That's where everything stems. It's the lie. And we have been lied to and lied to and lied to. Don't think it just stopped because Trump is in the White House. And because we are lied to all the time, there is nothing that you can just take at face value. And yes, this is an era that we are living that requires much of us. A whole lot of time, energy. It requires that we do the work necessary to change ourselves and to look at every event with with eyes that are questioning with ears that are questioning everything that you are saying.
much. We've got to stop being the people who vote for the lesser of two evils, and we've got to stop believing that, okay, this new person in the White House, this new guy, he's going to fix everything. Doing the exact same over and over and over again, expecting different results. We've got to look at our own insanity and then try to heal it.